Food. We love it. We crave it. Pardon. Pour madame. My favorite food is probably goat cheese. I like kind of the combination of sweet sugar uh, and rich fat. Wonderful, smooth feeling, beautiful, beautiful smell. A New York style cheesecake uh, is something that uh, I, I really have trouble uh, resisting. We're obsessed with flavor, yet taste is the most overlooked sense. But now, Surprising new discoveries are changing our understanding of taste. For example, it was recently discovered that it looks as though there are olfactory receptors on the tongue. Your tongue can smell things. We thought of taste and smell as independent senses that only united as the sensation of flavor when they reached the brain. But scientists have discovered this combination of the senses can begin on the tongue as well. Taste cells are magical, powerful cells which teach me everyday new things about how we taste. We smell through the, our tongue what we eat. I received a number of emails from people around the world. They mentioned that they have a total smell loss, but they can smell through their tongue. The fact that your tongue could be smelling and nobody knew it until last year is a measure of how much we can still learn. If you go to some of the labs studying the evolution of taste, people are discovering new tastes almost every year. Calcium taste, phosphorus taste, um, the taste of some fats. So when you add it all up, there are probably about 50 um, taste receptors uh, in total. So that's about 10 times more than uh, what we have in the visual system. Taste receptors are gatekeepers. They evaluate what we eat. When we eat, if you think about it, this is the most dangerous thing we do every day in our lives because we are deciding whether we're gonna take something, put it in our mouth and inside our bodies. Uh, is it nutritious? Is it poisonous? Taste is a kind of sensory morality. It tells us what's good and what's bad. If it's nutritious, it's gonna taste like savory from amino acids, or it's gonna taste sweet from carbohydrates, or it's gonna taste salty from sodium chloride. If it's poisonous, it stands a good chance to be bitter. And if it's very bitter, maybe it's very poisonous and it's probably best not to eat it. Now we just go to the store, we buy things, we just assume everything is fine. But during most of human evolution, that wasn't the case. You had to go out and look and find things and, and worry about it. Our chimp-like ancestors lived in the trees, feasting on ripe fruits that were safe to eat. But the transition to the ground was not without its dangers. When our ancestors move onto land, some of them began to try to eat plants. But as time passed, plants evolved better defenses. So they evolved sort of chemical weaponry. And those chemical weapons could be deadly to the, the early herbivores. And so the herbivores evolved in response bitter taste receptors that would tell them before they ate a whole bunch of a plant, this will kill you. And those receptors went from one to two, two to four, four to eight, until they were very, very diverse, and each one was cued in on a particular set of chemical compounds. Mammals today have a diversity of kinds of bitter taste receptors. There's not a bitter taste receptor, but they all go into the same wire. They're all wired the same way to our brain, and they just signal bitter. 
And that was a way of telling us, don't ingest this. I think that it is true that bitter plays a role in ensuring that animals don't overconsume something. But it's, it's interesting because people do consume bitter things, as do other animals. And so, for example, chimpanzees ingest a number of bitter plants that they ingest as medicines. When they're ill, they actually go after things that are bitter. All medicines are a question of how much. Bitterness, along with sweet, sour and umami, is detected by cells within the taste buds. We used to think these were unique to the tongue, but taste cells have been discovered throughout the body. They look like taste cells uh, and they function like taste cells, particularly um, the taste cells that respond to bitter compounds. These are free taste receptors, they're not in taste buds, and they look as though they're sending subconscious signals to our brain and body to respond to what we've ingested, what we've bumped up against. We have found them uh, in the gut, so in the stomach, the intestines, uh, the pancreas. Uh, we found them in the uh, airways, um, in the, the lungs, uh, the upper airways, the sinuses uh, in the nose. What they were doing there was a bit of a mystery. However, one part of this mystery has been solved. Every day, we're under constant assault from germs. Once inside the body, these invaders release chemicals to communicate with each other. But these molecular whispers don't go unnoticed. They're detected by the free taste receptors. The bacteria are talking to one another about whether they can expand or whether they should contract. And the human bitter receptor listens to that. And when it hears the bacteria growing, does things that kill the bacteria, it has some bactericidal uh, responses. I hear it, I uh, sense it uh, with uh, bitter uh, receptor proteins, uh, and I'm going to mount an immune response. I don't know exactly what it is, but I want to put out these um, peptides, which are part of the innate immune system, uh, and it will kill the bacteria, uh, and it will also send a signal to your regular uh, immune system um, that there are some bad things here that you should pay attention to. But some of us are better than others in detecting invading bacteria. And that's linked to differences in the way we perceive bitterness. One of the most striking differences in bitter perception was discovered in the 1930s. And a chemist was synthesizing a compound and he was maneuvering it around in the lab and it poofed in the air. And the person next to him found it extremely bitter, whereas the chemist himself thought it doesn't taste like anything. And that was really the start of the understanding that there are huge differences in our ability to taste these particular bitter compounds. If you don't taste bitterness well, you'll likely enjoy an espresso or dark chocolate. But if your bitter taste receptors are doing their job, you'll find coffee and beer unpleasant. And these preferences in taste have implications. So one of the things is that when this bitter receptor, people have a form that doesn't work well, we think that they also perform poorly when their um, immune systems in their nose are trying to listen for the bacteria. If you are sensitive to bitter, like I am, you have a particular genotype. And I don't like coffee, and I don't like beer, and I actually don't like dark chocolate, but I tend not to get a sinus infection because I have the same genotype in my taste cells in the tongue as I have in the airway cells uh, in the sinus uh, in my uh, nose. And that will protect me against these um, pathogenic bacteria. But other people that are insensitive to the bitterness will like coffee and dark chocolate, they are more likely uh, to get these uh, sinus uh, infections. They uh, often have to get um, recurrent treatment with antibiotic uh, to cure them. And after the antibiotic is done, the bacteria come right back. So this is a way where we see taste has real health consequences.
The bitter taste receptors in our nose are the security guards of the upper airways. And recently, scientists discovered other bitter receptors in our gums. That's a fascinating discovery. But uh, what's more important is to understand uh, what it's doing. Why is it there? The nooks and crannies of the mouth are home to a rich microbial garden. Billions of microbes thrive here. Most of them keep us healthy, but some can cause disease unless their numbers are kept in check. And that may well be the role of the gum's taste cells. By alerting the immune system when the bad bugs get out of control, they're maintaining a healthy oral ecosystem. These cells will protect uh, against um, pathogenic uh, bacteria uh, in your mouth uh, and keep uh, your gums healthy and therefore keep your teeth um, healthy. We know that diseases of the gums are, are very um, serious and infection of uh, bacteria in the gums can travel throughout the body, um, through the uh, blood um, and end up uh, in the heart, in the valves of the heart uh, and cause um, heart damage. So these cells are protecting our teeth, but they're also protecting the rest of our body from uh, infections that might uh, start in our mouth. This is just one sliver of an example of how the taste receptors are important for our body in ways that just don't have to do with our sense of taste. It's easy to imagine that, well, it's my tongue. How could we not understand the tongue? How could we not understand the mouth? How could we not understand the nose and flavor? But the truth is that although it's right under our nose, although it includes our nose, that we're just beginning to make sense of it all. And so all of this is going on behind the scenes. We still know so little that we can make fundamental discoveries about ourselves that are both immediate to us and then immediately apply to everyone on Earth.